What is good, sister family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with the overall market, what's going on with Tesla, SPY, Nvidia, the Q2Q, and a couple of other tickers. Some very important levels to be watching for as Tesla's at support right now. And what the news is saying with the markets based off the data and based off what's happening right now around the world. But before I break anything about all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends very soon. It ends in just about eight days. So check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with Tesla and the market. So looking at Tesla's things, just barely at support at the 50 EMA, which is at 264.5 right now. This is going to be a very key level for today. If Tesla breaks below this, we're going to see this thing start sinking quite lower. And if Tesla manages to hold this, we could see an attempt to rebound just a little bit, try to get back above our EMA. Now, looking at this price action so far, Tesla is completely flat. It's not really picking a direction just yet. And we're going to be watching to see what news comes out over the next hour or so to see if anything happens that ends up affecting Tesla and how Tesla ends up affecting uh, you know, how that ends up affecting, excuse me, Tesla's price action. So we're going to be watching all of this, but let me just first mention that we have some building data that came out. The housing permits uh, were a little bit higher than expected right over here. Uh, nothing else is really changing. Housing starts month over month are a little bit down though. But besides that, there's just some signs of contracted demand and everything else is very close to expectations. Uh, housing starts are a little bit lower though. So that is you know, a, a little bit significant, at least for the housing market, but not too huge for the stock market as of right now. There isn't really anything else coming out in terms of data until like tomorrow when we have FOMC. So the market's going to be kind of cool at this point in terms of data. Now, when it comes to very important things to remember about the markets, we are quite flat right now on futures. The UAW strikes are still going on. This is going to have a big effect on many other, uh, you know, car companies. It's going to affect... Uh, you know, the livelihoods of these workers and they're going to continue to, you know, go on strike. So this is very important. Uh, we actually saw about what they are arguing to be about 4.1 million labor days lost and what a purpose these people will do what they believe in. So I still have respect for that. But once again, guys, we will see what happens with this and how it affects these other companies. Now, when it comes to the overall anticipations of millions of Americans, there are some signals right here from surveys that they may start cutting back on spending, at least to some extent, at least that's what they claim uh, for most of the holiday season. So this is important as demand can be slowing. And we have some new iPhone features and don't forget that the iPhone sales have been going up and the pre-orders both in India and also in the USA. And this is some big news with the new iOS updates just coming, not to mention the new iPhone. Things are very exciting for Apple nonetheless. And Instacart also had its IPO, so interesting stuff so far. This is basically what's affecting the market for now. Futures are quite flat. Looking at Tesla, okay, the Model 3 Highland has arrived in Italy. This is some good news for them, and they're continuing to get more exposure thanks to that. However, looking at the news so far at the time I'm recording this, I'm not really seeing anything else that's too big for Tesla. Uh, maybe something will come out right before the market opens, so we're going to be watching to see how it ends up affecting the share price. Anyways, now let's talk about what the technicals are suggesting. Tesla and the market are very, very flat, like a pancake. Nothing is really going on so far that's too crazy. Tesla is sitting at this support, and I just want to remind everyone that we're going to be watching this 264.5 zone. Tesla has to try to hold this for there to be an attempt for it to bounce. We need to see Tesla try to bounce off of it. Uh, if Tesla breaks below that zone, we're going to likely see Tesla start sinking towards this support zone right way down here on this 260 area. And if that fails us, right, this historical support, if that fails us, then we could see Tesla start sinking all the way down to 257. So there's a risk of it coming down to 260 if we break below our key support. There could be more downside coming. And we have to be very careful as Tesla investors, okay? We have to be very, very careful. Uh, Tesla could see some downside if it ends up breaking, but as of right now, it's trying to hold up. Now, if Tesla ends up bouncing off of this, if we end up bouncing off this trend line, there is potential for it to try to get all the way back up to almost like 270 or so. There is potential for that, and there's a good chance of it trying to do so. Right now, it's going to depend on the news, what kind of news comes out. And so far, Tesla has been holding out, so we're going to be watching this very, very carefully. If Tesla holds this and tries to rebound, I could see this thing coming back up to like this 270 area just for a small test before it continues 
uh, you know, trading sideways. After Tesla had that 3% red day yesterday, there is a good chance it's going to try to rebound. So just, we're just going to be watching this just to be safe and trying to be open-minded. But I do believe there's a good chance it's going to make an attempt to try to uh, get a break to the upside, right? You can see right here, it's trying, making an attempt with this bullish divergence. Right about here, there could be an attempt for trying to get a little higher uh, just to start us off before this thing starts cooling off. Uh, but I do want to note that the four hour time frame is still looking kind of weak. So even if we do break uh, to the upside just temporarily, it may just be very temporary for Tesla, establishing like a lower high, which we were talking about yesterday before this thing starts sinking even lower. So hopefully this is as clear as possible. We're just going to be watching this support. There is potential for Tesla to try to bounce off of it before coming back down. But we're just going to be watching it to see how it reacts. If we get bad news all of a sudden, because you never know, sometimes it could happen. Watch the support. If it breaks, that's going to be a bearish signal for Tesla. Now, as far as SPY goes, this right now is very flat as well. The four hour is looking uh, kind of flat. We're not really picking a big direction. We're just stuck in the middle. And looking at the 30 minutes time frame, there was some sign of life before it started to come down just a little bit. It's still only down 0.05%, so it's nothing like too significant. Uh, as of right now, SPY is just a little bit down, but it's still kind of flat. So we're going to be watching to see how this ends up moving, if we can truly establish a higher low. I also want to note that on the 30 minutes time frame, there is technically an inverse head and shoulders that could be forming unless we end up breaking down back to like 442 and we fail to establish it. But there is potential for this to try to hold support and try to bounce back up. We want to see it get above its 50 EMA. If SPY manages to get above this 50 EMA right here, so 444.36, this thing has the potential to start pushing for 445 plus all the way back up to these higher levels. There is potential, but we first have to get above our 50. That's going to be the key resistance to be watching for. I also want to note that with this inverse head and shoulders, there is potential for it, but we need to see it try to break out. If we end up breaking down, we're going to be watching 442.3 or the 442 area. That's going to be a key support. We need to see SPY try to hold that too for there to be an attempt for it to rebound. So watch this all very carefully. These are some important levels. 442 as support, not to mention 440. And then we want to get above 444.36 as resistance. Hold above that, and there will be more upside potential. There's an inverse head and shoulders, so there's a chance it's going to try to play out. But we're going to be watching this very carefully to see if this works out or not. So be very careful. Watch the 30-minute on SPY very carefully nonetheless. I also wanted to add that Apple... Apple is still holding up quite decently. We have a potential bullish structure as Apple's making higher highs and higher lows. And we have a nice accumulation phase on the 30 minutes time frame. So I think that we could be forming a cup and handle on Apple. There could be a little more upside coming. So that's what makes me think that the market may try to hold up a little bit. Apple doesn't look like it's done just yet. It's still holding up after the bullish iPhone news came out about how there's all these pre-orders coming out. And this does look like a cup and handle that could be forming. So there's a possibility Apple may make an attempt to hit 180, then start trading sideways up there that may help spy pump just a little bit so we could see a little upside thanks to that and if anything if you look at tesla now it's turning a little green showing a little bit more life so we'll see if tesla could get that rebound uh looking back at the qqq this is very flat a little red but just like spy we have a potential and a possible inverse head and shoulders that could be forming now if we're bearish, you want to see the QQQ break below 368. This low right here, 368.76. If that breaks, we're going to turn bearish. If we're bullish, you want to see it break above its 50 EMA, above 371.3. If we do so, we could go all the way up to 373 to the 200 EMA, right? So there's potential for the triple Q with the inverse head and shoulders. We're going to be watching to see if this holds or not. If it holds, there could be a nice rebound coming. If it fails, then it is what it is. But this is what it's looking like. There is some potential. Looking at NVIDIA, there's also a possible inverse head and shoulders forming on it. Uh, it's very possible that this plays out for NVIDIA as well. But here's the thing. Uh, we want to see NVIDIA try to hold above 442. That's going to be the key resistance to watch for. If NVIDIA manages to break and hold 442, we're currently at 440.5. If we get above 442 and hold above it, I can see this thing pushing for the 200 EMA. Very, very close to 449. Uh, there is potential for NVIDIA with the inverse head and shoulders, but we want to see it break out. If we end up failing to hold 440, we're going to see this thing sink towards uh, 437, 435, and the list goes on to those lower levels. Uh, 435 and 430 are going to be two supports, not to mention, you know, 427, 425, and 420. Uh, if anything, I'm leaning a little bit more bullish, though, with the structure and with the way Apple is looking. So there's a good chance it's going to try to hold up and try to push for 448. Uh, so for most stickers, we have more bullish potential with the patterns forming so it's a little i'm leaning a little bit more bullish but i just want to watch it just for extra safety i hope that's as clear as possible amd 
Potential inverse head and shoulders can be pushing for 104 relatively soon. Uh, market is still trying to hold up quite decently. Finally, let's just mention, <laughs> excuse me, sorry guys. Uh, let's just mention that the dollar is kind of like gapping up. So we're going to be watching to see if the dollar rejects off 105. If it rejects and starts sinking, it's going to be bullish for the markets. If it keeps going, that's going to be bearish. But it looks like it's at resistance. It might reject and start coming down to fill this gap. That could be a bullish signal for the markets. Looking at the VIX, uh, I, I don't think it's open just yet. So we're going to be waiting for the VIX to see where it opens. If it gaps up again, we could cool off. There's also a possible head and shoulders on the VIX, which could lead this thing to dropping as the market tries to pump a bit. So there are a lot of signals suggesting the market may see some upside. Uh, I'm not promising it's going to be that major, that significant, but there is potential for it. Okay. So we're going to be watching these levels very, very carefully. We want to see if Tesla can try to get above, you know, 268, for example, try to get back up to 270. But Right now, just watch resistance and do what you have to do, guys. I thank you all so much for listening. And hopefully this video was helpful. Don't forget to watch your four-hour time frame in the 30 minutes on Tesla and all these different tickers. Note that we have some bullish formations and do what you have to do. All right, so have a great day. Uh, I'll see you guys very, very soon. And peace out.